Hi everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna discuss about orchid information, contradicting and conflicting information and wrong information out there. Why do we have so much wrong information on the internet? So I'll give you a few examples today and hopefully we'll have a better understanding and we will be able to choose better when we read something. Now I tend to believe that many of the information that is wrong out there is not intentionally wrong. I think people are just propagating the wrong thing without actually knowing and without actually wanting to harm. So my first example will actually be quoting sources that might look legit. So this week mom drew my attention to this TV show about gardening. It was on the national TV actually and they were talking about orchids. Now since I have experience with orchids, I easily spotted all the wrong information they were providing. But for a normal person who maybe is just starting out with orchids, all this information might sound very legit and very accurate. I'll actually give you an example. So the people on TV were saying that it's not okay to water orchids with tap water. The best water to use is rain water. They didn't actually mention that you need to fertilize the water. Then they go on in saying that if you don't have rain water or distilled water, you can use bottled mineral water. Now in my country, bottled mineral water, like the name suggests, has a very high content of minerals. So if you actually digest that phrase, you can see how wrong it is. First they say use rainwater because it doesn't have any mineral content. And then they say use bottled water which has a high mineral content. So it's easy to assume that a person who sees this on TV thinks it's legit and then goes on forums or blogs and writes about it, repeating word by word what some experts had to say. So that's one way of propagating bad information on the internet. The second way of propagating bad information is to read your orchid incorrectly. Now I have an example here. If you see it, you might say, what a beautiful orchid beautiful flowers, this orchid should be very very happy and very healthy, right? Wrong! I actually know for a fact this orchid is really unhappy. I'll give you a brief history. She was spotted in the orchid focus media. She had a bad case of root rot. I was actually forced to cut away all her roots. Now for a trained eye it's actually pretty easy to spot this orchid is really not happy. She might be on her way to recovery right now, but at this particular moment in time she's absolutely not happy. Look at the pseudobulbs. They used to be very big and then as time went by they got smaller and smaller until I was left with these very tiny pseudobulbs. They also have some wrinkles. Also the flower spikes, they might be pretty but they're not the full potential of this orchid. She only has three flowers. Here I only have one bud per tiny flower spike. This is not normal for this orchid. She should have produced between six and ten flowers. Now let's presume I'm actually growing this orchid in soil or water culture and I see that my orchid blooms and seems to be happy because I cannot read the signs. If I have this experience, I'll post it on a blog or a forum or even on YouTube, right? I might think my orchid is happy when in fact it's not, it's actually struggling. So if you have an orchid, you just repot it in a different media and along the time the pseudobulbs get smaller and smaller even though the orchid blooms that's really not a good sign and you cannot say your method works. Some methods take years to experiment and sometimes I am quite skeptical of some growing methods. But whenever you read about something like this, look at other details, not the blooms, not the fact that the orchid was able to bloom. Look at the size of the pseudobulbs in time, look at the size of the flower spike, look at the leaves and then you'll actually have your answer. Another way to spread bad information is to make false assumptions. Now this is an orchid that I got recently and you might remember it. I think I got it two weeks ago. I have a problem with this orchid and I'm actually gonna make a separate video. But look at this. The pseudobulbs are shriveling. Also the flowers are fading. And I did water this orchid. So it's clear it has an issue. Now let's presume that when I got this orchid a few days later I actually repotted it. And after repotting I would have observed that the flowers are fading, also the pseudobulbs are shriveling, so I will make a very wrong assumption that it has to do with my repotting. There is actually no way for me to know that if I just left the orchid alone and now repotted I would have gotten the same results. So then I will go on a blog or on a forum and actually say that orchids after repotting will lose their blooms, will have shriveled pseudobulbs, will sulk and even that they hate to be repotted when in fact it is just a particular case. 
I might also have an orchid that I didn't repot, and I actually don't have shriveled pseudobulbs. So I can assume that not repotting is actually good for orchids, not disturbing them, when in fact it's simply a matter of plant health. So you can see how drawing the wrong conclusion can lead to a chain of things. I like to call them rumors. This is why I really don't like that rumor that says orchids after repotting or if you repot them at the wrong time will sulk. Of course it's not a general thing, I'm pretty sure there are some species that will not enjoy being repotted at the wrong time and I will mention those that have a winter rest or a very specific type of growing. But for the rest of the orchids who have continuous growth along the year, I really don't believe this is true. I actually think it has to do with the health of the orchid and how you repot it. If you chop away too many roots, it's safe to assume that the orchid will have a slower recovery. Now this is actually an experience related thing and you'll discover it over time. But I hope you can see that this is one of the causes why we have so many orchid rumors out there that are simply not true. Another way to propagate wrong or contradicting information is by only thinking of your experience. And I have an example, this is the Maxillaria picta, and she's producing flowers. Now if I look for some articles about this orchid on the internet, I will find a website who tells me this orchid blooms in the fall and winter months. If I look more, I will find an article that says this orchid blooms from spring to summer. Which one is true? Now this particular orchid seems to bloom in the fall. But this is the first bloom. I don't have this orchid for a very long time, so I cannot say that her bloom season is only fall. Maybe this orchid is free flowering. Maybe she blooms both in the fall and in the spring, and also in the winter and in the summer. So maybe the sources you find on the internet are quoting people who only talk from their point of view and from their experience. If they're witnessing the first bloom of an orchid in their care, they might be tempted to believe that the bloom season for that particular orchid is a specific one, when in fact it might not be. And the worst part is that the sources you're reading seem legit and should be legit. Also, the past week I had a discussion with my viewer Fifi, and she was reading on a forum that this lady was actually keeping her orchids in water culture and also in distilled water and they were blooming and they were doing nice and I actually told my viewer that the best thing to do is to actually find those sources which have continuity. I like to read and watch videos that have continuity. Point zero, one year later, two years, three years, four years. After that I can make an informed decision. It might mean I'm a skeptical person, I don't know, some stuff just don't sound logical to me and I actually prefer to wait and see if I have a continuation to the story. Regarding the whole water culture, I'm afraid this is not a new idea. If you search on forums, you will see topics from 2006. Now the sad and worrying thing about it is that they do not have updates. The persons who created them did not continue the story. We might draw the conclusion that they don't grow orchids anymore, or they don't like to post on forums anymore, or that the experiment actually failed. There's no way to know. So before you take a decision, look at the continuity and think things through. If you want to experiment with something, don't go and experiment on your whole collection. Choose a few candidates and draw the conclusion for yourselves. Also keep in mind that with orchids, because they're slow growing, some reactions will take a lot of time to show. It might take a few years for you to decide if a certain method works for you or not. But there are things that can actually take a few weeks or a few months. So my only advice to you guys is to think for yourself and filter the information you hear through your own logic filter and draw the conclusion that is the soundest to you. Alrighty, so thank you for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it and hope it cleared some stuff up. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and a share, subscribe to my channel for daily orchid videos and also feel free to leave me questions or suggestions for videos in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to orchidnature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section and on the right side of your screen you can click to watch another orchid video. Thank you for joining and have a great weekend. See you next time. Bye!